Taking action is only half the battle. Your reason for taking action is just as critical and can either kill your determination off completely or ignite motivation along with your results. If you want to stay in the game long enough to find out how far you can really go, you must get under the hood of motivation and figure out which of the six types you rely on the most and if there's a better way to motivate yourself and become even more determined. Fighters, welcome back to another episode of Heatric Muay Thai Performance. You started Muay Thai because you were curious and it was fun. No doubt you discovered it was both physically harder than you thought and more technical and skillful than you thought too. Despite frustration when it takes you longer to get something than you like, you love that you're getting better at it. You've learned a lot about yourself along the way, exposed personal strengths and weaknesses, and your curiosity turned into passion. As you evolve in Muay Thai, you chase progressively more challenging goals, each one taking you outside your comfort zone, but expanding that zone with you. The bigger the challenge, the more your motivation and determination is tested but the bigger the personal reward is too. This cycle is what grows you as a fighter and a human being too. The human side, what's going on inside your head, is uniquely personal. One person's spontaneous ignition is another person's wet wood and no matches. At first, just joining a Muay Thai class took all your determination. Then it was partnering up with someone for pad work rather than just hitting a punch bag. Partner drills and controlled sparring all took you to your new limit. You may feel your next challenge is a non-decision interclub or smoker fight, maybe an amateur fight, a title fight, or even fighting pro. It's a continuous sliding scale of challenge coupled with a corresponding level of required competence. What's right for you at your stage of personal development is not the same for someone else. We're all on our own journey, striving for our own goals. Only sometimes we find we aren't. How did I end up chasing this goal? No wonder my motivation has plummeted and I no longer feel I'm a determined person. And I even question, can I actually call myself a fighter? It's crucial you find your own reason to train or fight if that's where you're at. If you want to reignite that passion you had when you first found Muay Thai was your thing. To share a relevant part of my journey, I had no Muay Thai coach for my first decision fight. And my two cornermen were my training buddies who hadn't fought either. We had no idea what we were doing, just watching what everyone else was doing for backstage prep and for corner work. I came from a Muay Thai gym with no fighters, only martial artists. I'd been promoted to an instructor and after years of my Muay Thai coach failing to arrange any fights, he eventually told me I'd have to do it myself as he didn't have time for it. And when fighters lose, they lose motivation and this loses him students. Motivation is at the heart of all of this. My motivation for my first decision fight was desperation. I'd already turned 33 and wanted to fight before I was too old. And having been a Muay Thai instructor at my local gym for five years at the time, without the opportunity to do more than the occasional non-decision interclub or smoker fight, I felt a total fraud. But because of my Muay Thai experience for my first fight, I was matched for an amateur area title against a fighter from the home gym, KO in Tottenham. I fought terribly, and I was shocked at my apparent lack of fitness and inability to perform technical skills under stress. It was a close fight, but I lost. But I learned a lot. I went back to the drawing board and trained very differently. I then won my second fight my third, my fourth, and many more. And within a year, I held three amateur area titles in three different weight classes simultaneously. I was invited to represent England both at the Amateur World Championships in Thailand and the European Championships in Portugal, where I won a silver medal. All without a Muay Thai coach, just enthusiastic training partners who wanted to both help me and learn from me. I was a crash test dummy that managed to pull it off. And some of those I coached managed to pull it off too, while others couldn't. I realized my personal psychological approach worked, but that most others weren't baked the same way. So why could I get this to work better than most? And how could I help those that were floundering tap into their own best personal performance too? 
Why has my passion for Muay Thai grown while others lose their motivation and spiral into self-doubt? The secret is having the right kind of motivation. By practically applying self-determination theory, we can better understand ourselves, avoid self-sabotage and shift to what truly motivates us. Tapping into the type of motivation that research shows blows the others out of the water when it comes to being the best you can be. And as coaches and teammates, we can avoid inadvertently sabotaging those we train with and boost their motivation instead. And that rising tide lifts all boats. Just see what happens to your whole team. I could see that mapping out motivation on a spectrum from low self-determined to high self-determined, it became obvious why my approach worked for me and why it didn't for others. Your driving reason for training or competing makes all the difference to the type of motivation you experience and how effective it is over the long term. And it's consistency over the long term that really changes the game. I've seen many a fighter's motivation burn bright only to burn out quickly. Burning bright and burning long is the way. Broadly speaking, there are three categories of motivation. A motivated, where you have zero drive to even attempt an activity at all. It's like you don't want to even bother to light the fire because you don't have any matches or kindling and the wood is soaking wet. Then there's externally motivated where your drive to do something is in order to achieve an external reward or outcome, such as a prize, a promotion, or recognition from others. It's driven by external factors, such as incentive, rewards, or social pressure. For example, someone who's extrinsically motivated to train may do so because they want to win a competition or receive praise or approval from others. It's like you'll make the effort to light the fire because really you just want to eat a cooked meal. Finally, there's internally motivated, where your drive to do something is for its own sake rather than for an external reward or outcome. It's driven by an individual's personal interests, values, and sense of enjoyment or satisfaction. For example, someone who's intrinsically motivated to train may do so because it's fun, rewarding, or satisfying on a personal level. It's like your fire just spontaneously combusts. Spoiler alert. This last type of motivation will result in the best performance in anything you do. However, there's more to this picture. At one end, we have a motivation, no desire to act at all or low self-determination. And at the other end, we have intrinsic motivation or high self-determination, where we act just because it's fun. And these two extremes are like banks on either side of a river of external motivation. And there are four stepping stones across this stream, each moving closer to our goal of intrinsic motivation, spontaneous combustion, and further from a motivation with no drive at all, wet wood and no matches. Let's take each of these steps in turn to explain them through self-determination theory. The first on the riverbank, a motivation is the lowest in self-determination. Here, you don't act because it's not interesting or it's too difficult. You feel, I'll never learn, I give up. Stepping onto the first stepping stone of external motivation called external regulation, you act because you have to for someone else. You were told to. You feel, I have to do this or else. At this stage, your effort level is low and you shirk responsibility for any failure. On the next stepping stone of external motivation called introjected regulation, you act because of status, ego, and pride. You feel, I do this to be better than others or to avoid feeling guilty. Here, you put in more effort, but are poor at coping with failure and give up easy. The next stepping stone, called identified regulation, takes us over halfway across the river and marks a threshold into better motivation. You act because it aligns with your personal needs. You feel, I do this because it's important to me. You have more interest and put in more effort. You become better at coping with failures too. The next step in stone, called integrated regulation, and just one step away from the riverbank, you act because it aligns with your personal values. You feel, I do this because it will make me grow, to become a better person, a more skillful person, a better version of myself. 
effort goes up even higher and you cope with failure even better too. Finally, you step onto the bank on the other side of the river, moving into true internal motivation. You act because you love the process. You feel, I do this to quench my thirst for knowledge and I find it fun and rewarding. Here, effort is both at its highest and ironically, it's easiest. Failures just propel you to become even better. You can see how both yourself and those around you are likely spending the majority of their time at certain motivational steps and how this either helps or hinders overall motivation and the results they get. The truth is you can only reap the benefits of any of this with practical experience in the field. That is going out and pushing yourself to feel both the excitement of success and the disappointment of coming up short, testing your motivation. By understanding this motivation continuum and the telltale feelings that each step produces, you have a great diagnostic tool for identifying which kind of motivation you or your teammates are currently tapping into and how helpful that is. And it's important to realize that these motivation stepping stones aren't a one-way trip. You won't remain at the same point all the time. It fluctuates depending on situations and circumstances, and you can be more or less volatile depending on your personality traits too. We need tools to shift between different steps in motivation and recognize what and who can inadvertently push us back to the start. I'll go into this in part two and provide practical actions to both better understand yourself and make changes that boost intrinsic motivation, minimize imposter syndrome and reveal the best fighter you can be. But for now, in an increasingly overprotective, oversensitive society, Muay Thai teaches you who you really are, warts and all. And this self-knowledge is incredibly valuable. It's truly life-changing. If you're motivated to train or maybe even fight in Muay Thai, you're choosing to fast track personal growth. When you chose Muay Thai, you chose wisely. Thanks for listening. If you found this valuable, please like, subscribe and share with someone else it could help too. Please give the podcast a review or comment below. We'd love to hear from you. As always, you can visit heatrick.com for more Muay Thai performance podcasts, videos, articles and guides. Catch you next time.